Hello and welcome back to another game review. My name is Saiken and today we're taking a look at Banishers The Ghost of New Eden, a freshly released game uh, from Don't Not Gaming, the producers of Vampire, that has just been released today. If you are enjoying this game review or if you want uh, to purchase the game, there is going to be an affiliate link down below that gives you a 5% coupon. Head over to gamesplanet.com uh, who kindly sponsored this. However, as always with uh, sponsored games, I am um, keeping the integrity of game reviews absolutely above and beyond everything else. I am not a new age, but rather an old school game reviewer for me. I really like stricter game reviews. A okay game is a five to six out of 10, a good game seven, a great game eight, a game of the year type of game nine out of 10, and a genre defining game would be a 10 out of 10. So I say that in advance in case you are used to other game reviews. So without further ado, let's see what the banishers have in stock for us. The Banishers is best described as an amalgamation of Witcher 3 game elements meets Dark Souls meets a very story-driven game. It's a multi-platform game. It'll be released uh, to all of the major platforms plus PC and is basically telling the story of a lover doer uh, that are banishers. And banishers in this particular universe will need to fight the ongoing onslaught of ghosts, uh, the veil between the living and the unliving or the living and the dead has been pierced multiple times and Red and Antia are going to do their job in order to set things right. Both arrive in New Eden and from there the whole storyline takes off. So if we're looking at uh, the game in its uh, fullest, the question is how does it fare in the different categories and how well does a very story uh, driven game really perform? Let's first and foremost start with lore and background. It comes at no surprise that a game that puts its emphasis on the lore and uh, the storytelling of a world, if it is well written, that it does a good job in doing exactly that. So whenever I talk about lore, for me, two parts are important. Number one, the pacing. What you don't want to do is information dump on the player. And secondly, the consistency of the world. Does what we are hearing make sense? And both is definitely given in Banishers. I have had no idea of the universe in advance and I started with a fresh slate. As a viewer, I got slowly and surely introduced into the two characters, uh, Reed and Anthea, who both have very distinct personalities and also different viewpoints to life. The game does a fine job in portraying uh, the age around 1700 and does play with gender roles as well as different ethnicities during this time. References to actual wars that were happening uh, during this period make it more grounded and narratively sound. The game also introduces the concept of the ghosts, why they are even a thing and establish with really fine bits of lore here and there, how both of uh, the hunters became banishers over time and what does it mean to be a banisher really. Finally, what I really appreciated about the game is it does a good job over the many, many periods of just resting, different quests that you are doing and evolving the characters to spin and detail the background narrative. You are learning, for instance, a long time into the game that Anthea has a couple of twin sisters, what her stance on family is, but also um, collective information about the necessary background of ghosts are being woven in, such as Anthea casually dropping the info that she has fought against a massive uh, beast called the Scorch and that she needed to fire a ship cannon in order to sink another ship to destroy that, uh, that Scorch. She brings that up in uh, a context where you may or may not fight a similarly dangerous beast. 
And that really uh, means that the pacing is on point. Now, what could they have done better in order to present uh, the lore? From time to time, some of the characters in the world seem artificially um, dubious. Uh, the game tries to paint a lot of gray pictures um, or grayness in the moral behavior, but it felt hard for me to believe that every single one um, of uh, the characters during the uh, 1700s is just above and beyond evil in uh, some case. So I was not liking that part a lot. The second uh, portion that they should have done a little bit better is if you are focusing so much onto the actual narrative, make sure that you point out important and unimportant NPCs. I appreciate that the world is very rich and that you can have hundreds of hours of uh, storyline if you talk to all of the NPCs in detail. Unfortunately, a lot of it becomes repetitive as the uh, world is pictured in a very bleak and unforgiving way. But if you hear for the 15th or t uh, hundreds times that someone is starving, it uh, begins to not only not drive the message more home, but it also makes you a little bit numb. So artistically speaking, uh, for a movie type of uh, game, other games uh, like uh, Aliens, for instance, have done it better. Sometimes less is more when you focus on a couple of core dialogues and they are very well written. That might be a bit better than kind of prolonged and uh, quality o uh, quantity over quality type of approach. Banishers, Ghost of New Eden shines with a astonishingly neat and detailed graphic. The shading, uh, the textures overall, the different characters never feel dull. They are very much on point. And it certainly helps that motion capturing technology has been used in order to uh, really represent the facial features. All of the main characters that you see have actual actors behind them that were not only voicing the line, but uh, for uh, many periods also used motion capture in order to just make more fluent animations. And it is artistically just pleasant to the eye. You gotta give the game uh, that. So I was a bit torn when uh, going through the graphics and uh, graphical user interface piece because it is a tale of two sides of the coin. Well, the graphic is absolutely on point and arguably one of the nicer games that you will see even with modern graphic engines. The graphical user interface is not necessarily as good as it could be. Mostly the game suffers from the typical um, illnesses or diseases of a multi-platformer where you are trying to kind of piece all of them at the same time and all of the different inputs at the same time. You want to make controllers as playable as mouse and keyboard. And this game um, is kind of stuck in, in, in the middle. There are a couple of elements that are simply missing in the graphical user interface and you can blame it onto deliberate game, uh, game decisions. I think it was just an oversight. Uh, for example, there is no minimap, which is just highly annoying because you need to go through two menus. And it's just a low quality of life uh, setting that could have easily been eradicated if you would have done a better map, specifically if you compete with titles like The Witcher or Skyrim and are trying to fit that same niche. Additionally, I think although the actual combat uh, looks crisp, some of uh, the feedback uh, from a graphical perspective could have been a little bit better uh, outlined. It is oftentimes unclear at the beginning of the game how certain uh, actions function. And although the uh, playability of uh, the game as in fightability, and we come to that in a, in a second, is very, very well done. Uh, this game suffers from not enough feedback to the player, as in enemies are jumping in a certain direction and you get no indication what the actual landing zone or hitbox is going to be. Um, little niches, uh, niche elements like that, uh, that games like Monster Hunter have done simply better, are not very well done in this game. So if I was to split this uh, category into two, I would say graphics uh, definitely in the upper epsilon, maybe nine, 10 out of 10. 
whilst the graphical user interface is pretty much average, uh, bang on, and could require a little bit more work. So overall, we're ending at a still good to great product, so 7.5 to 8, but nothing exceptional that it could have been if they would have uh, invested more time into it. Which brings us to sound and special effects. Uh, the game, again, has a high focus on that um, graphical and audio representation. So it comes at no surprise that they are good within it. I cannot uh, falter or really judge a game down if the sounds and the music are fitting. They are doing a good job in that, and that's exactly what I would give uh, the game 7 out of 10. All of the weapon sounds are nicely distinguishable. All of uh, the voice lines are very much spoken well. It is clear that actors have been behind it. It is a very story and narrative driven game. And for the elements that are important for that type of game, the game does a good job in just performing that. The different dialects are included. All of the characters have a very deep and uh, meaningful um, persona and the different sounds just underpin that nicely. Combat sounds are on point. Uh, the little clicks and bits and pieces here and there, openings of books, uh, knocking of stones, just the stomping. There was one particular uh, scene where a massive beast was coming overhead uh, of a uh, cave that we were in and just the falling down and dropping of earth was incredibly well timed so those little niches uh, really lever the overall production into a good um, array why isn't it a exceptional or great uh, portion for starters i think uh, the overall uh, music in the game could require a little bit of rework. I talked in a different review of Wasteland 3 about a game that is absolutely on point with its music. This game is could use some better and more fitting music from time to time. There were pretty harsh cuts here and there and uh, I personally found that the music was of lower quality than, uh, than uh, the rest. The second part about sound and FX um, was just the overall lines that were sometimes being used specifically when you go through different parts of the game you're oftentimes hearing the same lines over and over again i think a little bit more variety would have been uh, well suited because with the way that the game is currently structured it then starts to feel repetitive i would uh, say sometimes in the sounds less is more Focus on the main dialogues. Make sure that you maybe have one or two less characters in uh, the game that are saying more or less the same thing. And make sure that you're more crisper on the delivery of the other parts of the game, the non-cinematic parts. The game shines in the cinematic parts, but is a little bit meh in the non-cinematic parts when it comes to the sound delivery. All right, let's move on to the tactical gameplay. And that is where potentially more of my points of criticism will sink through. Uh, because the game itself artistically and just from the looks and feel is an absolute marvel. But when you unravel the hood and look underneath uh, the shiny outerior, um, you will realize that there are a couple of problems and that it is more of a mixed bag than just a polished all-around game. For starters, let's start with the things that are working good in the tactical gameplay. You are going to fight a lot of monsters in a Witcher-esque uh, fashion. And uh, for that type of gameplay, it is important uh, that number one, there's a wide variety of skills. I would say the game is okay in that regard. So kind of six, six and a half, maybe uh, even good. Some of the boss monsters are well and neatly done. Secondly, it is important that the game is crisp, as in the controls uh, need to match up with your movement, specifically if you are preventing uh, hits from happening. So it's kind of the dark so uh, soul element. In that case, the game definitely nails it. You are always feeling very well in tune with the game. Collision is uh, mm, uh, being calculated very nicely. The hitboxes are very nicely done. So despite all of that, you might now ask yourself, well, why wouldn't you then give it a seven or an eight out of 10? 
Well, like I said, there are a couple of mixed features. For starters, I think that the actual combat part of it is a little bit dull. Uh, you do have a skill tree, but it does not feel like every single aspect of the skill tree is very well thought through. Some of them clearly are better um, than others, and they are not very meaningful decisions either. In other words, I could potentially play through the game without leveling up a lot of uh, these skills to begin with. Um, it's just a core gameplay loop. The normal hits and the avoidance of attacks are so important that the whole skill tree felt a little bit forced. Secondly, in a game that already has magical elements, I feel that they could have gone a little bit deeper into the magical elements to begin with. Uh, they definitely added elements in it, specifically with your ability to switch between a corporeal uh, read and a incorporeal ghostly fear. Um, that has been nicely done. Also, you do have ranged as well as melee weapons, which is a nice uh, toss-up, but overall, for a 50 hours game, I think that that uh, game loop is getting old relatively fast. Compare it to games like The Witcher, where you had three diff very different build paths that led to very, very different ways of fighting with Geralt of Rivia. Uh, think of uh, Skyrim, where you do have, I think it was 15 different skill trees that absolutely and fundamentally made it uh, incredibly different in the experience of how you approach it. If you compare those excellent games, and to be fair, Skyrim would be a 10 out of 10 in that particular case. Uh, the Elder Scrolls are very good. If you compare that as a genre setting game, um, the fair judgment for Banisher's Ghost of New Eden is that it falls short in those categories. You do neither have the necessary level of depth, nor do you have uh, the exciting level ups that you would have in the other games. Instead, you're getting pretty much the Dark Souls experience of rolling around, uh, trying to um, melee and ranged mesh, and from time to time combo nicely off of it. It is graphically pleasing, it is fun to play, but um, I would uh, question to which degree it will keep you entertained for longer than 50 hours. I can always pick up Skyrim and do another playthrough, despite me knowing uh, the main story so, so well. But I don't feel that Banisher's Ghost of New Eden will deliver that same experience. However, that being said, if the price tag of 40 to $50 release uh, price for a nice 20, 30, 40 hours worth of movie is worth it for you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I personally think it is a good game. I enjoyed the playing through it, um, but it is a game that I would potentially, for those very reasons, not necessarily come back immediately. Which brings us to the whole replayability perspective of the game. Listen, I'm the first one who likes RPGs, and I'm also the first one who likes replaying storylines. I don't mind uh, seeing the same storyline unfold too much. And Banisher's Ghost of New Eden has tried uh, to put elements of replayability in there. For starters, whenever you uh, finish quests in the game, uh, so-called huntings, you can decide whether or not you want to ascend the ghost, what basically means the ghost uh, will be set free, but uh, or the spirit is set free, but um, lingers around, so theoretically they could return. You could banish it, preventing it to enter the mortal realm ever again, or you could sacrifice a living being and basically feed a ghost with it. Without spoiling too much of the storyline, uh, it is quite obvious that one of the characters, Anthea, dies relatively early in the storyline, and uh, is basically there as a ghost, whilst Reed, her uh, ethereal lover, is physically there. And one of the core questions in the game that you need to answer is whether or not you are going to save her and bring her back from the dead, as in sacrifice and do evil deeds, or if you are basically banishing and descending all of the ghosts, but accepting that your love of uh, your life has permanently and forever vanished. 
I like that moral question behind it, but that moral question is not enough to let me replay the game. And here is where the replayability problems start. The game itself uh, opens uh, up a world that is ready to explore. However, the world is not necessarily an open world as in a Skyrim or as in a Witcher where you do have a lot of uh, terrain to traverse and then you're just running into random encounters over time and then there's always something else that you want uh, to do. Instead, what the game does is it offers these little maps here where you do have sometimes the left and the right option and uh, there are optional objectives that you can take in order to uh, skill up your character and make it uh, stronger. But the reality is that in, on a normal playthrough you would get 50, 60, 70 70% of the content and if you really want to push it you then take your end level character and kind of explore the rest of the map which is fine that is all good but what if you have done that once how would you come back and how would you replay it the moral ambiguity is simply not enough in order to justify it instead what you would require is a deeper uh, skill system uh, the um, narrative elements and the movies will not keep you attached for a second and a third time to the same degree you already know the core storyline yes there will be other dialogue options when you choose something else but are you really going to spend another 50 hours uh, in a game when all you want to hear is how one particular NPC reacts to being sacrificed or not I doubt it. Uh, other games and I come back to The Witcher or the Skyrim uh, or ju just general uh, the Oblivion uh, uh, series do that much better because they are in a situation where uh, the game has a main storyline but there are so many plot points that you can play through it over and over again. I played The Diaries of uh, Dead uh, which is a permadeath uh, series for Skyrim Requiem and I over a Diaries of Dead, I did never ever play the same content twice and I could do eight series out of that easily and the character is still leveled yada yada yada. So my point that I'm trying to drive home is um, of course a larger world will allow for replayability. This game here has a very streamlined and very story driven approach to it and you need to live and die by the decisions that you make. The downside of that will be that you are not going to have a lot of replayability and that combined with the rather I, sh I will be kind light tactical decisions that you need to make throughout the game um, really puts this game more into a game where you would want uh, to see the nice animated uh, dialogues and basically watch an interactive movie than a game that you really want to invest into building. I won't do any guides for the game because it's simply not necessary. I don't feel that there's anything meaningful that I could contribute with a game and that level of shallowness or uh, lack of uh, depth behind the hood is what keeps the game from truly being an outstanding game. So Let's go back to the overall judgment. I don't want it to sound too harsh because Banisher's Ghost of New Eden does have a lot going for them. So the overall verdict of the game is Banisher's Ghost of uh, New Eden is a good game. It is an okay to good game to be more precise. It is at the upper epsilon of the sixes and maybe tries to go to a solid 6.5. As an OK Plus game, it certainly has a very clear strength and weaknesses profile. It has absolutely fantastic graphics, nicely well written dialogues, a good and uh, digestible lore and background, good fitting sound effects, but it comes at the expense and lack of tactical depth. The gameplay therefore can become repetitive at points and the replayability certainly suffered out of that as well. However, I enjoyed uh, playing through the game and some of the other games that uh, would fall into that same category wouldn't have caught my attention for longer than two or three episodes, but uh, Ghost of New Eden certainly did. So take it for whatever it's worth. It gets a Saiken recommendation if you can spare the $40. And if you want to see a long movie and have a little bit of action in between, want to have a ghost story, a little bit of a spooky experience, then Ghost of New Eden 
uh, Banishers is a game for you. If you don't want that or just want to watch a Let's Play uh, to get the same movie experience and do it together with me, well, you're in luck. I am going to release a Let's Play for the game as well. As always, at the end of each review, please let me know in the comment uh, down below. Did I nail it? Does what I've uh, said make sense to you? And do you think that that is a fair review for Banishers Ghost of New Eden? Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Enjoy your time and see you soon. Bye-bye.